in 2022, there are four things which you need to take care of when you're about to enter Panama that migration may or may not ask of you. But if you don't have them, then you are likely to be refused entry and put on the next plane. It's no exaggeration. I know people who that has happened to personally, and I've also seen that happen to other people. So I'll get into that later. Um, but it's just important. These are very simple, easy things to do. These are four simple things, three of them required by law. The fourth thing is basic common sense and will help migration officers let you into the country and make their life easier for them So and for you. So um, let's get into them. Now, before in the past, it was necessary to carry 500 US dollars cash or equivalent in cards that you could use in ATMs and shops. That's changed this year, and unfortunately, there's many websites, including the British government's website, giving travel advice, that have not changed the advice, it's out of date. What you need to do now is have at least 500 US dollars cash, or equivalent, but that's the minimum. So the migration service can require you to have any amount they choose that's reasonable above that amount. So they may require you to have 3,000 worth of uh, available credit or cash and not allow you entry if you only have 500 or 2,000 worth. That's just the minimum now, it's very important to consider that. And the other thing which I've seen people get sent back on a plane for is that although it can be a mixture of cash and cards or all in cards, all in cash, occasionally people do come in or try to come in with cash and it's not US dollars. Unless you have it in US dollars, you won't be allowed entry to Panama. And it doesn't matter if you have with you five, ten thousand dollars worth of other currency, they will not allow you to enter. They do not care. The rules are the rules. It may not seem common sense to you, may not seem reasonable, but those are the rules. And if you think about it, it's common sense to enter a country with money or a way of paying for things uh, when you arrive there from the get-go. You should have made those preparations before coming. So just confirm again, you need a reasonable amount of money to cover your stay. It's going to be more than 500 US dollars. It can be any mixture of credit card, bank card and cash. However, if it is on the uh, bank cards or the credit cards, what you need to do is take a screenshot before your flight on the same day showing your bank account balance or your credit card balance and credit available. So those are very important. I've come and gone from Panama many times over the years. I've only been asked on one occasion, which is in 2020, about having capacity to cover myself financially whilst in the country. And I had a little bit of cash and the rest I had on cards. The migration official accepted me just showing the cards, but he did warn me that in future they would expect that I would screenshot my accounts to show them. It just makes their job so much easier for entry. I have a, a friend who's from a, another country who also got through like that, but he was also asked next time to show the statements. Uh, I will say one thing which is a bit sensitive, that it will depend on which country you're from. Uh, from what I've seen and other people I know have seen, how much uh, scrutiny you face on entry. So there are certain countries where a lot of people historically have come to work in Panama, like for example as a au pair, as a nanny. They tend to scrutinise uh, people from particular countries more than others. Um, but it doesn't mean because you're from the United States or Europe or one of the friend, so-called friendly nations, Canada included, that you won't face any kind of scrutiny. And it also depends who you're travelling with as well. That can give you a higher chance of being asked for proof of these things and, and the other requisites I'm going to uh, mention now. So you may get many people saying anecdotally that nothing has ever happened to them. They've never been asked for anything and that's fine. But I only care about myself and my next entry to Panama going smoothly. And these are very easy things to take care of in advance. Number two on the list is a prerequisite for most countries in the world. In fact, I don't know any country that doesn't require you to have an exit trip booked. 
So an exit flight, if you can't show that on entry, very unlikely they will let you into the country. You'll be on the next flight, the same as if you didn't have the enough cash in the local currency. You could show them an outward bus journey, but it's very unlikely you're going to have that reserved and booked when you're uh, outside of Panama. It's something you'd normally do in the terminal there in Panama. There's nothing stopping you from changing your plans, from moving that flight to a different date or cancelling that flight and taking a coach to, for example, Costa Rica and changing your plans. All you're doing is showing them that you're a responsible traveller who's capable of taking care of themselves and you respect the rules uh, made for entry to the country. So that's just make life easy for the migration officer and give them the easy indicators that you're a tourist and you're behaving like a normal tourist would do. So it just makes life easier for them, easier for you. Number three out of the four items is having accommodation booked. So you should be entering the country at least with your first few nights of accommodation booked and you can show that to the migration officer. Again, what you're doing is showing that you're uh, doing normal behaviour for a normal tourist. Uh, a tourist would tend to have those things organised before they enter. It's not very responsible to go to a country and not have your accommodation organised at least for your first night. So that's going to go down well with them. It indicates you are a tourist, you're staying in a hotel or an Airbnb and they also have an address where they know you'll be because that's something they like to note down. They'll ne probably never ever use it, but it's something that, that again, just helps them make a very easy decision on letting you into the country. Uh, if you were in their shoes, you just have to think, someone shows up, they can't tell you where they're going to stay their first night and they don't know what they're doing, uh, they don't have any cash in the local currency and so on. It just doesn't make your job easy. So for example, if you were using the, the nanny example, if you were going to go and work as an au pair in the country, you probably wouldn't reserve a hotel, you'd just be going to stay with that family and the wage they would pay that person would be less than they could cover staying in a hotel. Just to give you an example of what would seem odd to a migration officer and helping them to connect the dots that you're a definitely a tourist. What you want to do is say this person is clearly a tourist, they know how to look after themselves, they're respecting the rules and we're happy to have them in the country. Number four is another rule that's commonplace when you're entering a country. They require six months valid passport and they require one to two pages blank where they could stamp. I don't know why it's that many but because it's just a stamp that's that big but that's what they require. So it's important to just respect the rules. The fact that you respect the rules just shows that you're someone who respects the rules and uh, going up against the rules and reasoning from your perspective will not help you gain entry. So there's one important thing that you may think might help you out as well if you're thinking about not completely respecting the rules or taking a risk. Important to note that in, in our experience that even if you've got someone waiting for you inside the airport and you ask migration who are holding you in their office um, because they've got some kind of problem that they need to solve, like you don't have the cash or you don't have um, hotel reservation, something like that, that you could get them to contact that person and that person would then come to your rescue, you know, say give you a thousand dollars cash or something and just resolve the situation. That's not been the case. They've said they were going to announce it in the airport. It wasn't announced. And so, you know, it, it really didn't help. And that person had to go back on the next flight. So believe me, there are plenty of people every day being sent back on the next flight. So you just don't want it to happen to you. It is true that it's other nations that are scrutinized a lot more than the friendly nations, but it's not exclusively, and you just have less chance, not no chance, of being uh, looked at more closely for these requirements on entry. And uh, like many things in Panama, it's consistently inconsistent. I've been in and out of Panama for years, only been asked once, and um, I've had other people I know from other countries 
who were scrutinized every single time, a lot of questions. You know, so it really depends if they have any kind of suspicion you're not entering for tourism, if you could be entering for work related reasons or other reasons. And you just want to make that as crystal clear and as easy to see for them as possible. And just remember, uh, this is the latest advice for 2022. If you see other things on the internet that contradict this advice, be very careful to see if they are updated. They have been updated in 2022. And as I say, even the British government's website still says that all you need is 500 US dollars and a few other things that aren't entirely uh, correct. One more thing before I go, I have some other videos which may be of interest to you. I've got one I'm just about to finish on the Malta. That's the fine for overstaying your tourist visa and paying the fine. It's not as simple as you may think. The things on that have changed. And I've got another one about how I'm carrying your passport identity on the streets of Panama too. So check out my Panama playlist uh, linked below and you'll find hopefully some other helpful interesting videos which are not speculative which are not made using stuff i found online these are from talking to migration officers these are from seeing things happen with my own eyes these are from uh, going to the migration office and speaking to them in the airport or and in in um, the actual national headquarters so uh, you'll get real information from someone who's actually researched and it's recent 2022 information and any questions or comments uh, please post them below and i'll be happy to read them and respond okay thanks for watching and take care